Hey everyone, I'm Tom from Ludicrous V. Thank you so much for joining me today. And uh, I was just having a look at this article by my good friend and co-host of my live stream, uh, Riz Akhtav, and he's written an article in The Driven. Uh, it's titled, MG Parent to release new EV with semi-solid state batteries and over 1,000 kilometers of range. So SAIC is MG's parent company, Shanghai or Automotive um, Industry Corporation, I think it stands for. Um, and the IM, which is another brand of SAIC L6, the IM L6 Lightyear Edition, uh, developed by SAIC, launching in China, featuring a 123.7 kilowatt hour semi-solid state battery pack, offering a 1,002 kilometer range on the CLTC cycle, which is the Chinese range standard. It's um, a bit inflated compared to WLTP, which is what we use here in Australia and most of the world. So I reckon subtract about 20% of that thousand kilometer range. So maybe say high 700s to 800 um, kilometer WLTP range, uh, powered by a dual motor oil drive system, producing a combined 540 kilowatt uh, all wheel drive powertrain. So 350 in the rear and 190 in the front. Fast charging enables 400 kilometers of range in just 12 minutes which is about 40% of the battery capacity. Um, and this semi-solid state battery was developed by uh, Qingtao Energy from China, of course, with investment from SAIC. The battery pack itself weighs 621 uh, kilograms out of the car's 2,330 kilograms of total weight. Um, it's a sedan, it's got a sleek design, coupe-like in a rear, coupe-like rear for better, better aerodynamics. It's got um, a yoke steering wheel, all those sorts of things. So. Um, not confirmed yet that the IM brand uh, is going to enter Australia by 2025 next year, but it's looking very likely, not confirmed yet officially. MG sales in Australia have actually been rising a lot, so 6,080 MG4 units sold in the first 11 months of 2024. So, very exciting. We uh, hear a lot about the um, semi-solid or solid-state battery technology, but I always think it's a few years away. But here we are having uh, a, you know, a uh, potential commercial vehicle, well, commercially viable vehicle, which is still a passenger vehicle, the IML6 coming to Australia, potentially, certainly launching in China with a semi-solid state battery. I've seen some of these IM cars in China early this year when I was there uh, with Riz in June 2024, and they actually look pretty good. Uh, we actually got to see one up close when they were charging at the uh, international uh, racetrack in Ningbo, very close to Shanghai. So let's uh, break this article down. So semi-solid state battery, what does that mean? So the, um, the batteries that you see in EVs these days, particularly in Australia, uh, either LFP or NMC battery chemistry, they're all a liquid electrolyte state, which means that you've got a liquid floating from, well, flowing from the uh, anode to cathode, I think, or cathode to anode, uh, either terminal, and that is what causes the discharge, provides power to the, um, to the car. So that's a liquid electrolyte. Obviously being liquid, there is, a, there is more prone to fire risk as well, uh, and is not as dense as, as say a solid state battery pack. So we're talking basically a solid electrolyte uh, rather than a liquid electrolyte. So you get a denser battery pack and potentially safer as well from a fire point of view. Uh, the problem with a full solid state battery pack is that you get these dendrites forming at the end of the electrodes and they can potentially cause the battery to short circuit. So that's been an issue that uh, battery makers have been trying to overcome over the years. So we've got this compromise called a semi-solid state battery pack where you've got a gel-like substrate or substance instead of liquid or instead of solid. So sort of a halfway in between liquid and solid state. So, you know, you, you obviously don't get as much of a fire risk as a liquid electrolyte, but you also get some of that density as well uh, with, with uh, the semi-solid state battery pack and potentially less risk of dendrites forming at the end of these uh, electrodes causing um, a short circuit to occur. So as a result, um, you look at uh, LFP uh, and NMC and you get density of around 160 watt hours per kilogram for LFP about 250 watt hours per kilogram for NMC. And all the way up the top, you've got the full solid state battery pack. And that's, you know, the golden ticket is around 500 watt hours per kilogram. That's what uh, people are saying the solid state battery packs can achieve. So with a semi solid state battery pack, you're looking at somewhere between 250 and 500. So let's say 300, 400 watt hours per kilogram for a semi solid state battery pack, which is, you know, reasonably good density. Um, and because of that, you can get more kilowatt hours or more energy, more energy stored into the same 
size battery pack as you would normally say for an LFP or an NMC battery. So if you've got a constrained vehicle, constrained space, like say a sedan for example, the IM, you can pack more, uh, I guess, electrons or more charge, more energy into a, sm a smaller or same amount of space as you would for the current technology we've got uh, with uh, EVs at the moment. So let's have a look at this 123.7 kilowatt hour uh, semi-solid battery pack offering say 800 kilometers of range um, and look at the weight itself as well the 2.3 tons for this car's weight with a 123 kilowatt hour battery pack that's not bad that's actually pretty good compared to <clears throat> you know similar size battery packs or even smaller size battery packs with similar weight these days in EVs if you calculate the article says 621 kilograms of that 2.3 ton bat uh, car is from the battery it works out to be about 200 watt hours per kilogram. So obviously I'm not doing the maths right. There must be some other compounds in that battery pack that um, that attributes or contributes to the weight rather than just the pure energy storage. So again, uh, we've got to have I've got to break down that semi-solar battery pack to tell you exactly how much of that 621 kilograms is just from energy storage rather than the components of that battery pack. But nevertheless, it looks quite promising. Um, and I'd love to see this car being tested in China and maybe in Australia one day as well. So what does that mean for us consumers in Australia? Well, assuming this does make it to Australia, assuming that a semi-solid state or a solid state battery pack does make it to our country eventually, it'll probably mean an increased cost, I would imagine, uh, particularly for early adopters of a solid state battery pack, right? Anything, you know, anything that's early in the early adoption phase is going to cost more money, unfortunately. So I guess for those who always say, I need more range in an EV. So this is where this is where this could be quite handy. If you need that extra, whatever, you know, extra range, 500 kilometers of extra range compared to the current EV battery packs, then there's an option right there for you. It's going to be more costly initially, but the technology is coming. And, you know, obviously there's a lot of rhetoric about um, fire risk in EVs. Admittedly, very small at the moment. You know, a ICE car is 20 to 100 times more likely to catch fire compared to an EV, or whatever stats you read, or depending on the stats you read. But a semi-solid state or a solid state battery pack is less likely to catch fire because of the fact that it's a solid electrolyte between the two electrodes uh, in a solid um, state battery pack or semi-solid state battery pack. So that's another benefit of having a battery pack that doesn't have any liquid electrolyte in there. So there we go. So IM or SAIC is uh, looking like it's uh, uh, beating the rest of the pack, uh, bringing a commercially viable uh, vehicle that's got a, a semi-solid or solid state battery pack in a new car. Again, like I said, the IM brand looks pretty good from what I've seen in China. Does it mean faster charging rates? Well, let's have a look at the article here. So 400 kilometers in just 12 minutes, which is about 40% of the battery. So let's say between 40 to 80% in 12 minutes. That's not too bad. I mean, it seems to be on par with the 800 volt architecture that we've got currently in cars like the Hyundai Ionic 6 uh, and 5 and also the Kia cars as well. And they can charge from say 20 to 80% in about 18 minutes. So it looks like it's probably gonna be a similar speed to that. I think 20 minutes is, is, quite, is quite acceptable, I think, in this day and age. I mean, 20 minutes is probably for a busy road trip, like busy time of the year, you know, even in a petrol car, a nice car there's going to be some sort of queue at a petrol station. So if you can charge an EV in 15 to 20 minutes, I think for me personally, that's quite acceptable. Enough to go to the bathroom, uh, grab a bite to eat if you want, um, and you know, duck back to your car. I think I've done that a few times with a charging speed that fast. It's, um, it's almost a bit too quick because you need to rush back to your car. Otherwise you might be subject to idle fees or even irate other irate EV owners looking at your car going, that's already charged. Why is that still parked there? So yeah, the future is exciting. Um, you know, the question is now, do we wait for this technology? Do we, you know, do we say, well, I'm waiting for that solid state battery pack. Um, you know, I'm not happy with the density of LFP or NMC. I need more range in the same amount of space of car uh, with the same weight. And that's another benefit of a solid state battery pack. You think with a denser battery pack, sure, if you want that extra range, it's gonna be a heavier car, but if you just want um, a smaller size vehicle, you could potentially pack more electrons, more charge, into uh, the same constrained space uh, that we've got currently with LFP or NMC. So yeah, I think um, the future is interesting. Uh, again, the cost is an issue with these solid state battery packs. Um, you know, how much more can we expect to pay? There'll obviously be a premium for that extra range as you'd expect, 
but good to know that uh, that technology is there. And I guess, you know, we've got uh, plug-in hybrid utes at the moment because they can offer that extra range or even SUVs like the C-Line 6 from BYD. But if you can have the same weight with extra range that's all electric, then I think it's certainly very compelling compared to buying a plug-in hybrid uh, where you're running on petrol after say 100 kilometers of range. So exciting stuff. Thanks again to Riz from The Driven for highlighting this uh, for us. And uh, again, thanks for your time. And make sure you leave a comment below to tell me what you think about uh, semi-solid or solid state uh, battery packs for EVs in the next, I don't know, two years, three years, five years, whatever it is. When does it become mainstream? When does it become commercially viable to produce these cars en masse with this new technology? All right, guys, thanks so much for watching. Until the next ludicrous fee video, I'm Tom. Until then, happy charging.